Hi, today we're going to learn the first half of the second solo from Sweet Home Alabama, and it sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, my name's Ollie from Your Guitar Academy and in this Sweet Home Alabama guitar lesson we're going to look at the scales, techniques and positions you're going to need to be able to play this song. Before we get started, remember to check out the description for below for a link to our website. There's going to be a full write-up there with all the scale diagrams and everything you're going to need. And if you love what we're doing, please uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Okay, so let's get started. The first lick sounds like this. So, just like in the first solo, we're in, think of it as G uh, major pentatonic, shape one, open position. <clears throat> so that's the lick. So we're starting on the open D string, hammer onto the second fret, and then open G string, and then back to the second fret of the D string, and then back to the open G string, and then second fret on the G string, so we get. And I would try and get that second fret probably with your third finger because we've got quite a lot of bending on that as well. So it's sort of a bend that's getting more and more as you, as you play the note. Four times. And then it's open, G string, and then second fret on the D, and then two open G strings. So, and then you can do a dip on the whammy bar if you have one. Okay, so that whole bit sounds like this. Okay, <clears throat> if you don't have the whammy bar, just, just don't do that dip. It won't sound um, massively wrong. Okay, so that's the first sort of lick to it. <clears throat> that's open position. Next one, we're coming up to a index finger around the seventh fret, seventh position, and we're going to be on this shape four of the still of the G major pentatonic. So with your middle finger, slide up on the G string up to the ninth fret. Okay, so this lick sounds like this. Okay, so <clears throat> it's really important that you, because it's a big slide, we cut change the positions, we want to make sure we're on the right finger to be able to play the rest of it. So middle finger up to the ninth fret on the G string, and then index finger, eighth fret on the B string, and then back down. So it's... And then we've got a really big bend on the um, <clears throat> 10th fret of the B string. It's actually a tone and a half, so we're bending up to what will sound like 13th fret on the B string. And then we're going to come down one semitone, so it sounds like the 12th fret. So we're getting this sort of sound. But we're doing it with bends. So it's quite tricky to get that. And you can you can come up to it both both times. So, uh, although the second time, I'm not relaxing the bend completely. I'm just coming down ever so slightly, just to give me that effect of coming up to a bend. And then after that, it's that's all on the tenth fret on the B string, and then it's down to the eighth fret again on the B string, and then it's eight to the nine on the G's twice. And then we've got that sort of rhythmic bit on the seventh fret of the G string. Okay, so, so far we've got. And then just to round it off, it comes down to the D string, slide up to the ninth fret, and 
the ninth fret again on the G, and then down to the seventh fret on the G. Okay, so that's the first two licks. <clears throat> we'll get them together. I'm gonna to play them both uh, slowly now, because they're both sort of normal pentatonic position stuff, no huge stretches. There's a huge bend on there, no huge stretches. After that, it gets a bit more um, technically difficult to play. So we'll go through the first two first, nice and slow. So here we are, this is the first lick. Okay, I'll do that one more time. Okay, and then the second lick. Okay, and then for that nine, you're using the same finger on two strings, so you do this little roll. Okay. <clears throat> After that, we've got this very fast part, sounds like this. <laughs> right, so that is like a, a mega lick. Um, <clears throat> but actually, it's just pretty much the same thing, just repeated a lot of times. So the trick to this is going to be getting the technique down first and then just working out the number of times it repeats <clears throat> and then practicing it. So we've got like a little lead into it. It's a slide up on the D string to the uh, 14th fret and then the 12th fret on the G string and then back down to the 14th fret on the D. So, and then we've got this part. So this is uh, 12th fret on the G pick that and pick the 14th fret on the G and then pull off to the 12th on the G and then so we've got and pulling off to the 12th and then we're back down to the 14th on the D so that 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 sort of leading lick sounds like that back to an open G. So I, I would think of this next part as, so it's kind of starting on an open G. So actually the rhythm, rhythmically it's the same as what we've just done, but there's a much bigger stretch. So your index finger is sort of rooted to the 12th fret on the G string, <clears throat> which is a G there. And we are gonna go pick that and then pick the 17th fret on the G, so you're gonna to have to stretch up with your little finger, and then pull off. Okay. And then back down to the 14th fret on the G, on the D, sorry. And that's, that's that lick, so. 12 on the G, 17 on the G, pull off, and then uh, 14th fret on the D. And I would just practice that on its own, because that's, you can see the picking hand has to do quite a lot of work here. And then it kind of switches back, to the, um, the one where it's going 14 on the G, down to the 12 and to the 14. So basically, the only difference between that one and that one, which are the two licks that make up this fast part, is you're either playing, <clears throat> the highest note you play on the G string is either 17th fret with your little finger or 14th fret, which you could probably do with your um, middle finger, just so that your hand's ready to do the, the big stretch as well. Okay, so let's look at that lead in again. Okay, so we've got that shorter stretch, fast part. Then. Okay, 
Okay, so we do that. <clears throat> and then we come back to the shorter stretch. Twice. So let's look at how, how many times we do the, the big stretch. I lost count. Um, <clears throat> so basically it does that long stretch one until the end of the chord progression. And then we do two on the short one and then back to the long one. Okay. And then we end it with a, which is the same two notes that we entered uh, this foot or fast look with. So that is 12th fret and 14th fret, G string 12th fret, 14th fret on the D string. Okay. And that's that fast part. So all together it sounds like. Okay. So I'll play that slowly <clears throat> and just sort of count through it, work out exactly how many times you're gonna be doing this lick and then, and then practice it. So. so I'll start again. So all together this fast lick sounds like this. So the tricky part of this is, uh, well, obviously it's very fast, but also it's just getting, getting it to fit. So a good way to do this is to think about how many times it does it. So what we've got is this. Okay, so just practice that lick on its own. That's a sort of lead in lick. And then we've got. Okay, so basically it does that eight times. One, two. So first of all, just practice it enough that you're really comfortable playing it. And then it's eight times. I mean, um, personally, I just think of it as it goes around the progression once, because um, that way I'm sort of listening to the song rather than trying to count the number of these, which they're, they're so fast, it's kind of hard to count them. And then it does two of the short, the smaller ones, and then three of the longer ones. And then we come into sort of a lead out lick of this is just again 12th fret to 14th fret on the G, on the D string. Okay. So if I play that whole thing together, uh, nice and slow up close, <clears throat> it sounds like this. Okay, I'll go a bit slower. After that, we've got this uh, cool sort of um, G major blues scale run. It sounds like this. Okay, and that's the last look of this first half of the solo. <clears throat> so we are still in this, um, well, sorry, we're back in this shape one. Sorry, of uh, G major pentatonic. this sort of blues note because that's a note we're starting on it's a chromatic one it is the um, <clears throat> 13th fret of the A string third finger and it's a slide up to the 14th fret so you're sliding back into the sort of normal pentatonic shape and then string skip up to the G string 12th fret and then down to the 14th fret on the D so all together it is 13 14 12 14. Okay, A string, A string, G, D. Okay, and after that, it's like, that's like a four note lit. One, two, three, four. 
The next four note lick is that. Here. Okay, so it starts with a slide down from the note that we've just picked. Okay, so we're sliding down to the 12th fret, and then back up to the 14th, and then we're going to the 12th fret on the G string, and then 14th fret on the D. Okay, that's quite tricky. It's a bit, um, you know, it's not sort of just normal pentatonic um, no noodling sort of thing. It's a really nice lick. Um, so for me, that took a little bit of sort of muscle memory reset to be able to get that. Otherwise, my hand just wants to go and just play the pentatonic scale as it's done so many times. Okay, and after that, the next four note lick is so we're starting on the 12th fret of the G string, hammer on to the 14th fret of the G string and then 12th fret on the B, and then back to the 14th fret of the, of the G. So we get, so all together we've got. And the last bit, up to the B string, 12th fret, hammer on to the 15th, because that we're off of that, uh, minor, that sorry, major pentatonic shape. One, and then hammer to 15 and up to 12 on the E, and back down to the 15th fret on the B string. So we're kind of, for those last two, we're sort of following the same sequence, um, just applying it to that pentatonic scale. <clears throat> and then the last note is 15th fret on the uh, E string, which is our root note, it's that G. Okay. And that's that for the first half of the solo. Sorry, it goes like this. You could do a little hammer on from the 12th fret up to the 15th. Okay, <clears throat> so I'll play that lick again, nice and slow up close. Okay, that's a super cool lick to just to play it, just practice on its own. Sorry. All right, that last hammer-on is really, if you're gonna do it really quick, it's not like the other hammer-ons where they they have their own length, note length. This one's just super quick in there, okay? So that is the um, the last part of the, the first half. So if I, I'll play through the whole lot now. I'll play it at normal speed and I'll play it more slowly and then we're, then we're done with that, that, that part. <laughs> a bit more slowly. So that fast bit is, I mean, it's hard to play fast, but I find it's actually much harder to keep the timing of that and the phrasing when you're playing it slowly. So I would suggest not worrying about like how many times around you're gonna play it uh, to begin with. Just get the technique. So it's down, down stroke on the, on the G string. Upstroke on the 15th fret and then pull off. And then it's a downstroke. On downstroke on the um, D string. That's the first time around. And then the next time it's upstroke on the G. Downstroke on the 15th fret. 
pull off, and then an upstroke on the on the 14th fret on the D string. So you kind of got it as like a, it loops, um, it goes over itself twice, where the picking sort of inverts. But if you do it like that, you're able to just keep an alternate picking um, motion going. And that's going to make it um, easier to get up to higher speeds because you're not you, you're just going to be um, doing normal normal feeling picking. Um, so I would first focus on it slowly without worrying about how many times it goes around. Just aim on aim to get the speed up a bit, <clears throat> and then when you're ready, just sort of play along with the song. Um, listen to it as you're playing it because I think that's going to help get the phrasing of this. Cool. All right. So that is the end of this uh, first half solo lesson. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please um, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. And if you've got any anything you'd like us to cover, just put it in the comments and we'll do our best to do that. And again, don't forget to check out the link to our site for the full write-up. Okay, thanks very much and I'll see you next time.